Hello, Cooper Glover, 1972, back with another video, part 40. Um, this probably will be a short video. Um, I'm trying to pump out or plug away at um, showing you a, my collection. Um, as I said before, I'm trying to like group these together based on director or theme or genre. Um, so, um, I have a few, I have a screenwriter, I have a musician, and I have a director. Um, so let's get to the screenwriter first. Uh, his name is, uh, Charlie Kaufman. I think he, I think he directed a movie too, um. I'll, I'll say the title of the movie after I show you the two DVDs that I have of his. Um, anyways, um, I guess he first came to prominence with this movie, being John Malkovich. It's signed by him. I met him at the Burns, Pleasantville, New York. Um, he was promoting... He, he and the... Um, <clears throat> fellow director made this movie called um, I don't know if I'm getting the title right uh, Amelina it was a stop motion movie it wasn't like cute characters or anything like that it was a, it, 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 it was like a you know regular drama but it was just it, the characters were stop motion puppets um, and it was funny and um uh, dramatic and uh you know I, I and I, i'm not sure if they could pick up a distributor for it I, I think they're still maybe they're still having trouble with it but they showed the film there and then they had a panel discussion they they first had <coughs> one of their um regular uh maybe he's a programming director he's a film director um john jonathan demi who uh, hosts Rarely Seen Cinema there, and he also hosts Westerns on Saturdays there. Um, great guy, very nice, very very knowledgeable about movies, very enthusiastic about movies, and enthusiastic about, you know, uh, and kind in life as well. Um, but anyways, he, he facilitated a conversation between Kaufman and, and the other director, and then usually they open up to the audience as well. But... Anyways, when 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 all of this when all of it was o over with, I asked him to sign two of my DVDs. So he signed John, being John Malkovich, a good movie. Um, if you see this movie, it's off the beaten path because you know you're, um, these characters are going inside inside John Malkovich's brain and wit and and seeing things from the point of view of John Malkovich. And it's just a weird head trip kind of movie, but it's very unique, and I highly recommend this movie because um, it, it's it's basically off the beaten path. It's not something you normally see, and, and be, because of that, it makes it, it makes it even better movie to watch um, because it's it's not your usual movie. That's what I like about it. Um, It's got some weird stuff on here. I don't know if weird is the right word. Theatrical trailer, TV spots. Seven and a half floor orientation. American Arts and Culture presents John Horatio Makovic's Dance of Despair and D Disillusionment. A page and nothing on it. An intimate portrait of the art of puppeteering. An interview with director Spike Jones. An intimate portrait of the art of background dr driving. Cast and crew biographies and filmography spikes photo album. It's a comedy, but it's really uh, kind of crazy movie, but really good movie. And the second movie <clears throat> he also wrote. Um, I don't know if he wrote this. I think he wrote this after being Jem Makovich. Signed this as well. Um, the Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Uh, with Jim Carrey and uh, Kate Winslet, Mark Ruffalo, Kirsten Dunst, Elijah Wood. 
Um, this is about a woman that she breaks up with her boyfriend and she wants to erase the memory of her relationship with him. And he does too. But complications ensue and uh, things don't things don't go off smoothly. So but it's a really good movie and it has a weird touch to it which uh, should it really adds to the experience and makes it more more of an enjoyable watch. Um, this is directed by Michelle Gondry. Um, Michelle Gondry also directed a film. I don't have it. I don't, I don't think it's a good movie, but it's an interesting concept. It's called Be, Be Kind Rewind. Um, these films get ruined at a video store, and so what they do, Jack Black and most deaf, um, what they do is they reenact uh, scenes from movies that were that were erased, and so that that's the plot of the movie but then it goes off in this other direction and it just goes crazy the film is pretty bad but the the idea is great um but anyways eternal sunshine of the spotless mind it comes with this comes with this um booklet and this is this is a good com uh performance by jim carrey he's not playing a uh um, comedic performance in this. Uh, you know, Charlie Kaufman, he, he really has a great imagination. And Michel Gondry did, did some pretty interesting things using practical effects and not, comp com you know, CGI or anything like that. And uh, it's, I highly recommend this movie. Really good movie. Probably one of the best of that year when it came out. Um, here you see a fourth perspective set um, where Jim Carrey and Kate Winslet are the same size, but because of the because of the way the set is constructed and the the angles, it looks like he's smaller, like in the Hobbit movies and the Lord of the Ring movies. It stars t and Tom Wilkinson is in this too. So, yeah, picture of Jim Carrey there. Um, Jim Carrey and Michelle Gondry explore the inspirations and nuances of a key scene in the film. Kate Winslet and Michelle Gondry share never before revealed experiences during the making of the film. New deleted scenes featuring Jim Carrey and Kate Winslet the genius behind the film's extraordinary visual effects, <clears throat> a commemorative book featuring photos and sketches from the film, look inside Eternal, um, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, a conversation with Jim Carrey and director Michelle Gondry, feature commentary with Michelle Gondry and writer Charlie Kaufman, the polyphonic spree, light and day music video, and Lacuna infomercial. Lacuna is the treatment you use to um, erase your memory. So, and it's a comedy like being John Malkovich, and it's it's using a unique story to um, a unique and unusual story to um, to to. To use rather than relying on being innovative and, and, and trying something thinking outside the box you know so um, they're good movies they're really good movies um, next up I bought these I think a library a few library book sales um, I watched one of these and I wasn't wild about it um, the other one, I don't know if I watched it or not. I can't remember. Um, I'm not even sure. Well, they're about Lady Gaga. Um, 
I don't. I think I only watched one of these. Here's the other Lady, Lady Gaga. I, I like her music. I enjoy her music a lot. Um, but uh, one of these documentaries, they, they, it's uh, detailing people that uh, knew her before she became famous. There's some footage of her performing before she became famous. But I don't think they really show anything past that. Or maybe they don't even interview her, her family or, or Lady Gaga herself or anything like that. So I don't know if it's that great a documentary. Um, and I can't remember what happens on... I think I think I saw this one. I'm not sure if I saw this one. So... Um, no, I, I don't think I was wild about it, but her music I enjoy a lot. I think she's one of the best musicians working right now. She's very creative, you know, um, but uh, I just bought those. They're cheap, and uh, I like Lady Gaga. So uh, I have a trilogy now. I showed you Sin City by Robert Rodriguez. Well, here, here's a film that he started off with, and then the, the second film that he followed that with, um, El Mariachi and Desperado. El, El Mariachi is a film I, I, I said to you that costs about $7,000 to make. Um, in order to finance the film, he, he, get, he uh, participated in a blood test experiment. Um, his commentary in here. There's a short film, Bedhead, 10-Minute Film School. There's a book that he wrote in conjunction with El Mariachi called Rebel Without a Crew. He shot this on 16mm. Um, he edited it with the video cassette recorders because at that time it was, I think, the late 80s or early 90s when this came out. This brought us the, um, I don't know if sequel would be the right word, but a remake of it on a higher budget, basically, with uh, big stars like Antonio Banderas and uh, Cheech, and, Cheech and Steve, Buche Steve uh, Cheech Martin and Quentin Tarantino, Steve Buscemi, Salma Hayek. So I haven't seen Desperado, um, but at some point I probably will. And then, then I guess it was the third in the trilogy. Um, Antonio Banderas again, Salma Hayek, with Johnny Depp, Once Upon a Time in Mexico. Loads of special features, audio commentary, 10-minute flick school, Inside Troublemaker Studios, Deleted Scenes, 10-minute cooking school, The Anti-Hero's Journey, Film is Dead, An Evening with Robert Rodriguez, The Good, The Bad, and The Bloody, A Look at the Special Effect, and the DVD ROM, <clears throat> Tester Wits, and the Shooting Gallery, and the, the, the Lotteria. And I think, I think this one has a, um, you, you know how celebrities like to, um, because maybe because they have a lot of money or, or fame, they decide to dabble in other pursuits. And uh, one of those pursuits uh, that some of them do is they have a band. They play guitar, or they sing the song, or they drum. Um, so I think it's Bruce. Was it Bruce Willis? Maybe maybe Rodriguez is playing the guitar with them or something. Or, or maybe maybe that's Sin City. Maybe no no I I don't know. On one of the Rodriguez movies, you'll see a musical performance at his place in I believe in Texas. So, you know, just, just an interesting tidbit anecdote for you. Uh, that, that's the video. I'm, that's all I'm going to do for this video. So uh, be on the lookout for the next one. And thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.